Hello, I'm Jack. Welcome to my channel, Practical Programming with Dr. Su. In this video series, you will learn everything you need to get started with WebGPU graphics programming. In the last video, we discussed how to use two separate pipelines to create a 3D sync surface chart with wireframe. The advantage of this approach is that we can get a wireframe with a true color, including the black and red color as shown here. Here is a red wireframe. This is impossible if we use previous uh, methods to create the wireframe by mapping the transparent square image onto our 3D surface. In this video, I will explain how to use the framework developed previously to create a 3D peak surface chart. Here, I will use the Git tool to clone the source code used in the last video and then make corresponding changes to the source code to build the project used in this video. Now, let's start a Visual Studio code directly from Windows Start menu from here. This is a Visual Studio code interface. Now, let's start a new terminal window and cd into a code folder. From this folder, let us make a new folder called GPU55. And CD into it. We can then clone the source code uh, used in the last uh, video with the command git clone webgpu54. After this command, leave a space and a period. This will place our, our source code in the current folder. Now run this command. We can check direct. You can see the source code is indeed in the current folder. Now we can open this folder from Visual Studio Code. Open folder. Code. GPU 55. Here contains the source code used in the last uh, video. Now open a new terminal window and run the command npm install to restore the npm packages used in this uh, example. OK, finished. Now all the installed packages are stored in the node modules folder. Next, we need to make some changes to the index.html file from DRST folder. Open index.html file. Here, we need to change the 54 to 55 because this is a 55th video. And also, we need to change h1 title from sync surface chart to peak surface chart. The parameter here used in this example here will be the same as those used in the last video. So we don't need to make any change to these input parameters. So now we can save this file. Next, we need to make some changes to the main dot TS file. Open the main.ts file from src folder. Here we need to change the sync surface uh, function from mass.func.ts file to pix. And also here sync pix. Also the range here, x, y range, 
change it to minus a three to three minus three three and copy this to here arrange and also zero three to zero the scale way change to zero since the most code for render pipeline and render pass has uh, have been already included in the surface dot ts file the main dot ts file here becomes uh, very simple inside the create a surface uh, method we create uh, three sets of data one is the data for creating our 3d uh, surface you can see we call it surface simple surface data which contains our vertex positions normal vectors and color map data the other two data are for creating our uh, y frame one is called mass another one called mass 2. the difference of these two mass data is that the mass data use a positive dy here while the mass 2 uses the negative dy which will create uh, the y frame for front face and another one for the back face here we define the default parameters we set the color map you can see to jet and the mass color to to black zero 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 and the dy equals to the 0 0.001 we then call the create surface method to create our 3d peak surface with the default parameters this part of the code allows the user to recreate the peak surface with different input parameters this code allows the user to select different color map from the drop down menus now we finish the modifications to the main.ts file so now we can save this file up to now we have finished all the programming we can then run the following command on the terminal window to bound our typescript code in production mode npm run prod okay the bound file is created uh, successfully now we can click the go live link from the status bar area to open cron canary to view our pix surface here go live click this link here is our picture surface with a black wireframe displayed on this page now you can change the color map and wireframe color for example we can change it to hsv and mask color to red you can also change it to the other colors here we can always obtain a white frame with the true color this color does not depend on the underlying color map which is different from the white frame created by mapping the transparent square where the white frame depends on the I mean, underlying color map now let's change the dy to see what happens for example change it to zero you can see here the y frame overlap with our surface you can see our y frame has discontinued you can see here discontinued mass lines sometimes the line segment becomes the death lines this is because the thickness of our surface and the mass lines is fixed to one pixel they just overlap together 
In order to see why firm with solid mass lines, we need to separate our Y frame from the surface with a small dy. If you set a large value for dy, for example, set it to 0, 2, you can see the Y frame is separated too much from the surface. So we can adjust the dy uh, parameter to get a perfect 3D peak surface. So let's set it back to 0 0.001. So you can see we get a, a perfect Y frame. Up to now, we have finished this example. Here, I simply demonstrated how to use multiple render pipelines to create 3D surface charts. I should point out here, in practice, we usually don't use this approach to create the two Y frames for 3D surface charts. Instead, we create a single Y frame using the anti-aliasing feature in WebGPU. In next video, I will discuss how to use the MSAA approach to recreate the peak surface chart with a single Y frame. Most of the examples presented in this video series are based on my recently published book, Practical WebGPU Graphics. From this link, drsu.net.com, you can see the details about this book. I have created a GitHub repository to host the source code used in this video series. From this link, you can download the source code used in this uh, video series. I also created a live demo at this link. This demo shows the live results by running the example projects presented in this video series. I will end this video here. See you next time. Bye.